It's a blustery Friday in Newton, far from any pace cars or cameras identifying those in the leaders pack. Just a splash of ocean blue leggings that hint at the bright personality of my elite running mate. Here comes Erica Kemp. Erica Kemp is the Erica Kemp show. There she is, Erica. Erica Kemp, a New Jersey native and six-time All-American runner out of North Carolina State. Running has given me a ton of opportunities. I've gotten to travel a lot. I've gotten to meet a lot of really cool people, and it's opened so many doors. The latest door opened in January 2023 in Houston when a one-hour, 10-minute half marathon finish time qualified Kemp to compete in the full marathon at the 2024 Olympic Trials. I've already qualified, but I haven't done a full marathon yet, so I really just want to get one under my belt. So, what better marathon to check that box than right here in Boston with the granddaddy of them all? I've been here for five years. This is where I started my post-collegiate running journey. It's where I found a lot of success and like really came into myself as like a longer distance runner. So I heard you had an adventure on your first 20 mile run. You got lost. So the plan was to start around mile three out in like Ashland, which we did successfully, and then just run 20 miles on the course. And on the map, it looks like a straight line. I happened to be on the right side of the road and going right took me onto the on-ramp for Route 9, but I've never seen that part of the course. So I was like, huh, it's like not quite what I envisioned. Finishing the marathon will require not only staying off Route 9, but also conquering the legendary Heartbreak Hill in Newton. I think it's a heartbreaker because it's 20 miles into the marathon and it's so long. But can Heartbreak Hill break me? I was about to find out. I'm ready. I'm ready with a professional water. Are you a talker while you run, or are you going to be silent? I usually talk. OK, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think when the hills are shorter, it's a lot easier to mentally be like, all right, just like 30 more seconds, and you'll be up and over it. But heartbreak is so long, it's like it's going to take you a few minutes to get up and over this hill. And with Kemp by my side, we make the climb. We did it! We press one break here with an elite runner. What's up, up? While Erica prepares for her first marathon, author Paul Clarisi has run 43. Not surprisingly, he's also a marathon historian. So everyone knows the marathon starts in Hopkinton. Why are we in Ashland? In 1897, the first Boston Marathon was run here at Ashland. The decision was practical. Not only is Ashland about 25 miles from the BAA's Boston headquarters, but it also has a train station. That way the officials can come off the train at the starting line here and go back on the train and do different checkpoints along the course where the train stops were. That would all change in 1924 after the official marathon distance was extended from 25 miles to 26.2 to match a precedent set at the 1908 London Olympics. The royal family added distance to ensure they could see the start of the race from Windsor Castle. So what did that extra 1.2 miles mean for Ashland? So then they just measured it. It happened to be Hawkington across the town border. Ashland marks its 27 year history as the start of the Boston Marathon with a plaque and this tribute to the early winners. Many of today's winners are paid runners. That's their full-time profession. Whereas back when the marathon first started, these winners had other professions. You look here, you have a blacksmith, a carpenter. They did their full-time job. They ran to and from work sometimes. That was part of their training. The first year, there were 18 entrants, 15 showed up, 10 finished. And it was like under 100 for decades and decades. It was just a road race. So how would the Boston Marathon grow to iconic race status? That's coming up.